Welcome to this wonderful platform. If it is your first time of stopping by or coming across this channel for the first time, you are welcome. Please, if you like what you see here, after watching, subscribe, put on your notification bell. It's very, very important because it's going to help you to know when I upload a new video. In this channel, I present to you news on daily basis on what is happening in the whole world, especially in Nigeria and in Biafra land. Yes, Abmada Biafra. I bring to you Biafra news. So before I do that, what I always do is that I analyze it and I sit down there to watch the video together with you. Then we'll come to the comment section to talk about it. Of course, everybody is entitled to his or her opinion. That is why the comment section is there for you to contribute, leave your ideas, your thoughts, your belief about the videos that you have watched. Please, as we are doing this, let us do it constructively as we we'll hop into today's video. Area, as well as politician Ulufemi Aino. Good morning. Yes, good morning. Thank you for joining us yes, in TVC Breakfast. Now, let's begin with um, issues bordering on, you know, how Namdi Kanu was rearrested and brought into the country. That, that's where a lot of people, that's one aspect that has generated a lot of uh, reactions. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of persons are questioning uh, the legitimacy of the procedure adopted in bringing him into the country. Mm -hmm. We've seen the reactions from his family. Mm -hmm. But government insists that it was a collaborative effort yes. between Nigeria's security operatives and some other intelligence well, operatives. Mm -hmm. And that was how they were able to, you know, uh, bring Namdi Kanu into the country or rearrest him, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But then let's look at the legitimacy. Mm -hmm. Let's help us understand what is the accepted mode mm -hmm. of rearrest in okay. such a way that it doesn't breach a person's human rights. Yes, uh, it's not the person's human rights per se. Mm. It's international law. International, international law. law. Right. And I must say this: it's quite. And I share the view that mm. look, what the Nigerian government did in bring uh, Nam the Kanu back to Nigeria is extraordinary. Mm. Extraordinary in so many sense. Um, what they are saying is that it was due to collaboration between the Nigerian government and other agencies. Well, that is the government marking their home, homework. And that's not the way to go. And that is something we need to condemn. Uh, I'm not saying we shouldn't bring uh, Nam the Kanu to justice, but let us follow the proper procedure. And the proper procedure is to have a proper extradition hearing, mm. whereby Indomni Kano will be able to explain to a proper court that, look, I must not be extradited to Nigeria because of this reason or whatever. And there's one important point. Listening to the Anthony General and others, nobody has shown us an extradition order that this man should go back to Nigeria and face his criminal trial. Mm -hmm. And the tradition is a formal process whereby you bring a fugitive who is running from justice from one country back to that country to go and face trial or serve the punishment. And I use the word former. It is not something you do through the diplomatic uh, maneuvering. Right. It is not something you do by just going there, you pick the person, you put him in the plane, and then the moment they wake up, they are in Nigeria. And in this case, it is very concerning that even in Kenya, the brother said he was picked in Kenya. Yes. That is a credible source. Let's believe the brother. Let's leave others who are saying maybe it was a honey trap or a sugar babe and all this cock and boo story. But in, even in Kenya, they have a law. There. And that law is called Extradition Commonwealth Countries Act. And it has been there since 1968. And for you to extradite, once you pick that fugitive, the best thing you do, you it must apply in the magistrate's court in Kenya. And the offense in which you want to extradite must be an extradition offense. Mm. Kano is facing terrorism charge in Nigeria. Terror, if you look at the Commonwealth Act in Kenya, Terrorism is not an extradition offense. And also, most countries, they don't extradite people if the offense is such that has a political character. Mm. One, 
Two, they don't extradite people if the person, if convicted of that offense in that country, right. is going to face death penalty or capital punishment. Even in the UK, you cannot extradite people to a country where they are going to face death penalty to start with. The only way you can do it is to get assurance from the receiving nation that, look, if you extradite him, we are not going to impose the death penalty. If that assurance is not there, they won't. And also, another point is that if you are extraditing them to a country where they are going to face degrading and inhuman treatment, mm. the courts in that country will not allow you to extradite. The Nigerian government, they are aware of all this. That's why they engage in whatever, whatever they might have done to get him to, because they know once they bring him before the court, there will be a lot of legal arguments here and there, and Kanu may not come here. And also, it is possible for Mr. Kanu to argue that, look, the only reason why they want me to come to court, because I'm agitating from separation, there are a lot of issues in Nigeria, this and that, they are punishing us because of what has happened in the past, we are being marginalized. This. So when you look at all that, then it is possible for the court to rule that, look, this offense has a political character, mm. and there might be other... So but could this be why he wasn't picked up in the UK, as a lot of persons it, thought? Well, if they pick him in the UK, he won't come to Nigeria in a million years. I can tell you that, because I'm a solicitor there. Number one, the Human Rights Act forbids you, under Article 3, sending people to a country where they are going to face a human degrading treatment. The prison condition in Nigeria is not something to write home about. The legal justice in Nigeria is something that doesn't move in a very punctilious way. That in the end, in the sense that cases can last for years, and you know, you're talking about petroleum bid that has been there since so many years. You see, when you look at all that, they won't. And you will not, and to give yourself the benefit of hindsight, there has been a persistent attempt to extradite uh, Alison Disiani from the UK. Mm. Up to today, what happened? There has been a persistent uh, attempt to extradite Julia Assange from the United Kingdom to America or Switzerland to face this. Uh, with the allegation against him. Up to today, it hasn't happened. So the United Kingdom will not. That's why they did not even make attempt. The only thing, the, what they did is to look for a friendly country or find a way to lure him to get to that country so that they can pick him. And I shared the brother's statement when he said, look, the, there, is not, uh, there is no other word for this. This is what they call rendition, whereby you pick the person, they get disoriented, I don't, you know, in the dark world, there are a lot of things that... Well, well, well we can still we say that to. we are assuming because government yes. hasn't come out to give us the full detail. Yes. We are hoping that government still brings up, uh, give us the full detail because a lot of Nigerians are interested in knowing how they were able to rearrest him with the process involved. But then let's move forward for want of time. Now, the UK is obviously interested in this case mm -hmm. and are seeking clarification with regards to that and saying that they can offer or are willing to offer Namdi Kanu uh, consular assistance. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if this can put a spin on the case. Yeah. Well, I don't think it can put a spin per se, because if you look at him, the Nam Dekano has dual nationality. Uh, he's a Nigerian citizen mm. and he's a British citizen as well. If he revoke if he renounce, sorry, that's the right word. If he renounce the Nigeria citizenship, he will get a full consular assistant. Because you see, under the Vienna Convention of 1963, you as a Nigerian citizen, if you travel abroad and you have problem and the police arrest you, the first thing they will do is that is there anybody, somebody you would like to contact? Yes. If there is nobody, you will, they will put you through to the welfare officer at your high commission or embassy mm. so that you speak to the welfare officer because the embassy are under a duty under that confession to give you a consular assistant. Being a British citizen, you will get a limited consular assistant because he has two nationality. That right. is one. But if you renounce the Nigerian nationality, then you will get full consular assistant. And that can involve what, the hiring a lawyer on his behalf. But what will happen, let me, why they use the word limited? Why I'm using the word limited now is because, one, they will get a consular officer who will attend court to make sure there is a fair trial. They will make sure he has access to his lawyers. Then they will make sure that, look, 
the judge the judge is going to do the trial listen to him and what have you so that's what they are saying and they have an obligation to do that under article 5 of the vienna confession but having said that if he now renounces british nationality and renounce the nigerian nationality that can cause all sort of legal argument because he become a stateless person and the nigerian government will probably have a problem because they are under obligation under international law to prevent statelessness mm. so what they can do if you know, the card choose to renounce nigerian nationality they will say no they are not going to accept it you are still in nigeria and we have the right to bring you to trial so it goes on and do that yeah. all right okay so the government is saying that he and his conspirators <clears throat> are going to face the full wrath okay. of the law okay. and you know when the government was speaking yesterday they talked about his lavish lifestyle and that they have a treasure trove of information on the lead, on the IPOB leader as well as his uh, conspirators as well and the question on the lips of some Nigerians is uh, the lavish lifestyle being mentioned and some of this information is it is, are this admissible in see, court? I, I, that's the, where the problem lies number one um, this is in our life. Uh, what the charge against him is in our, one of these lifestyle offenses where you are dealing with a drug dealer who engage in money laundering mm -hmm. because they always live a lavish lifestyle, living in a big mansion, riding all this expensive car, go shane, and what have you. Now, that this is a terrorism. It may well be. What they are going to say is that, look, fund has been going into the account and is using that fund to get weapon here and there. Mm -hmm. And now you you will realize that they've picked his phone. And, you, and I'm glad you used the right word, treasure trove. Mm. Once you pick the phone, you pick the laptop, that can lead you to so many people right. who this person has been communicating with. And they were going to carry out what is called cell phone analysis. And when you do the cell phone analysis, if you buy the phone in 1960 or 1970, we can, once they do the cell phone analysis, we can see all the tests you have sent right from day one. And it will show the people you've been communicating with. And normally, you know, as I do, that look, sometimes when you want to pick some of these criminals, once they move from here, you will know they've moved to Ibadan because the telephone mass yeah. which they are using can Peaks. give you a peak yeah. that time. From yeah. there, you can trail them. But what is concerning is that the kind can, I don't think it's a stupid person. Once you, are, you have a problem of this nature, and you want to travel, are you going to use your real identity? Most of his contemporaries, what they do is to use a Zoom identity because they know the security agencies are after trailing them. them. They are trailing them here and there. And also, who are you communicating with? Look, one, why one must commend the Nigerian government in a way for being able to trail him? They might have loved him using one of these kinky ladies with flamingo legs that look, calm down, we need to see you, blah, 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 I want to befriend you. And then also, when they do that, it is called honey trap, where you use yeah. a woman together. Or the alternative, maybe you do what is called a, a, a target monitoring. You are not monitoring in the kind of per se. You look for somebody very close to him mm. that look on every important day in his life. He must this see person the... is there. Yeah. When he had his baby, the person was there. When he addressed the media, this person was there. When his father died, this person was very instrumental. So this is somebody who we know where he's been hiding. So let's leave him. Let's focus on that person. Then right. when you trade that person, that can lead you to him. And it's just... Uh, why is unfortunate the circumstances, but ideally it is right for him to face justice. Now, government is, because a lot of Nigerians have been calling for a fair hearing, fair trial. And the government has again reassured Nigerians from the statement uh, it made yesterday that it's going to give uh, Namdi Kanu a fair trial mm. because that was what he got before he jumped bill, mm -hmm. according to them. But for you, in your context, what would be fair hearing, fair trial, because a lot of persons are concerned that perhaps this could fuel the agitations we have seen in the southeast. You know, let, let me deal with the first aspect. You see, if Kano is convicted of treason, he's going to face the death penalty. That is the law. But it has never happened in Nigeria before. Mm. 
there might be political intervention, you know, election is coming, you know, very soon some people will turn this into a campaign slogan that, look, once we get to power, we are going to pardon him, this and that, so as to get vote. So before the politician setting, and the another problem is that, don't forget, <laughs> President Buhari and the Buhari government is somebody looking at his watch right now because they have a few months left. If KI is not taking, if they can't see this through during the lifetime of this administration, nobody knows what is going to happen in 2023. But when you talk about a fair trial, you see, a fair trial is not about human rights, it's about a fair process or processes. Mm -hmm. And which that we involve, and we must, uh, sorry, let me rephrase a bit. We must com comment the Nigerian government. Now he arrived in the country, they are reigning before the court. Mm. It is possible for them not to tell us anything right. about him. Mm. It is possible for them just to keep him somewhere, mm -hmm. and then people will be agitating if he has committed any offense, bring him before the court. At least they are arranging him in court promptly. That should be commended. But what the fair trial we connect at this stage is, one, they must give him access to his lawyer. That is very important. And the judge must give him sufficient time to prepare his defense. That is the problem with the Nigerian system of justice. They bring them to court, then the judge said it's going to be back-to-back -back trial. Mm. In which case, the defense, we need access to him. You know, this is a guy who has been through a lot, irrespective mm. of his conduct. So the lawyers need to see him, that involved the fair trial, and at the same time they must give him as well, uh, an opportunity to explain himself. So all these are very, very vital and jammy to bring him to justice. All right, we must uh, thank you for your time. Uh, solicitor in the UK and Nigeria as well as politician. Always watching Linda's TV show. I will see you again in my next video. Remain blessed. I appreciate each and every one of you. And keep on watching Linda's TV show. If you have not yet subscribed, please, I beg you to do that so that you'll be getting more updates from me. Bye-bye.